then there is amalgamation in the nature of merger all the assets and liabilities of the both the companies will be merged together amalgamation in the nature of merger the same businesses of the transferer company is intended to be carried on by the transferee company credit balance of shareholders account debtor to equity shareholders account being various credit balances of equity shareholders transferred to equity shareholders account Hello everyone I am Purnima faculty in the department of commerce and management Vidyashram first grade college temple of excellence Mysore I welcome you all to the session in this unit 2 session 2 we will be having a discussion on the differences between amalgamation in the nature of merger and amalgamation in the nature of purchase so first difference is relating to the transfer of assets and liabilities so in the nature of merger there is transfer of all assets and liabilities so when there is amalgamation in the nature of merger all the assets and liabilities of the both the companies will be merged together whereas in the case of nature of purchase there need not be transfer of all assets and liabilities so the assets may be transferred or may not be transferred then second one is equity shareholders holding 90% shares so in the nature of merger equity shareholders holding 90% of shares in transferer company become shareholders of the transferee company so in the transferee company means the buying company and transferer company means the selling company so the equity shareholders who are holding more than 90% of the shareholding they become the shareholders of the buying company or the purchasing company in case of nature of purchase equity shareholders need not become shareholders of the transferee company so there it is not mandatory for the equity shareholders to become the equity shareholders of the purchasing company next third difference is relating to purchase consideration so in the nature of merger purchase consideration is discharged wholly by the issue of equity shares except cash for fractional shares so in the case of merger personal purchase consideration is discharged by the issue of shares equity shares or in small part in cash whereas here in and uh, the nature of purchase it need not be by the issue of equity shares only they can either pay cash or anything next same business so relating to the business so in amalgamation in the nature of merger the same businesses of the transferer company is intended to be carried on by the transferee company so in case of merger we have seen that in order to eliminate competition between the companies the companies merge together so this kind of a merger is there only when the both the business houses are dealing in the same products or doing the similar business so this kind this is transfer company is intended to be carried on by the transferee company so whatever business the selling company was doing the same business will be carried on by the purchasing company whereas in the case of main nature of purchase the company need not be intended to be carried on by the transferee company so the business need not be carried out by the purchasing company then next one is relating to recording of assets and liabilities so in the nature of merger the assets and liabilities are taken over are recorded at the existing carrying amounts except where adjustment is required to ensure uniformity of accounting policies so all the assets and liabilities of the selling company they will be recorded at the existing carrying amounts in the books of the transferee company whereas in the nature of purchase the assets and liabilities are recorded at the existing carrying amounts or the basis of the fair values so it may be the existing amount or the fair value whichever is acceptable then 
Next concept we have to understand here is the concept of purchase consideration. So, it refers to the price payable by the transferee company. Now, what is the transferee company? This refers to the purchasing company. Transferee company is the purchasing company to the transferer company. So, the transferer company means the selling company for taking over the business of the transferer company. So, this means the amount payable by the transferee company to the transferer company for taking over the business of the transferer company constitutes consideration. So, consideration is the value payable by the purchasing company to the selling company for taking over the business of the selling company. Next, there are four methods of calculating the purchase consideration. The first one is the lump sum method. Second one is the intrinsic method. Third one, net payments method. Fourth one is the net assets method. Now, let us see what is this lump sum method. The lump sum method has to be followed when purchase consideration payable to the, by the transferee company to the transferor company is specifically stated in a lump sum. So, if in the problem they say the purchase consideration was paid at rupees 10 lakhs. So, it means that it is the lump sum method of purchase consideration. Then second one is the intrinsic method or the shares exchange method. So, under this method, the purchase consideration is calculated on the basis of the intrinsic value of the shares of the transferor company. So, whatever is the value of the shares of the selling company, so based on that, the purchase consideration will be calculated. There is an example here. Suppose the paid up share capital of the transferor company consists of 50,000 equity shares of rupees 10 each fully paid and the intrinsic value of the equity share of the company is 12, then the purchase consideration will be 50,000 into 12, that is 6 lakhs. So, if you can see here, actually there are 50,000 equity shares of rupees 10 each, but then when they calculated the intrinsic value, if it comes to 12, then intrinsic value, that is the purchase consideration will be valued at 6 lakhs. The intrinsic value is calculated by dividing the net asset of the transfer company available for equity shareholders by the number of equity shares of the company. So, how do you calculate the net asset value? Net asset value will be all the assets minus liabilities. So, whatever amount you get. So, this amount divided by the number of shares. So, then we get the net, uh, the value, intrinsic value of the shares. Now, in the help of the intrinsic value of the share, you just calculate into the number of shares, you get the purchase consideration. Then, so in this net asset method, the purchase consideration has to be calculated. So, there are two methods that is net asset method and the net payment method. So, under the net asset method, we should understand that it is the agreed value of the assets taken over by the purchasing company. So, whatever is the agreed value of assets, agreed value of the assets taken over, that becomes the net asset method of purchase consideration. So, while selecting one of the methods, so we have to understand what is the method of calculating. So, if they give us the agreed value of assets, they can then we can consider the net asset method as the agreed value of the assets taken over. Assets taken over will be the net assets method. But if they give all modes of discharging the purchase consideration, so if they give you the number of shares, number of preference shares, number of equity shares, cash, everything is mentioned separately, then it is a net payment method. But in case of net asset method, they give you the agreed value of assets taken over assets taken over. So, that becomes the net asset method. Then under the net payment method, they will give you separately what is the number of equity shares, 
what is the number of preference shares what is the cash to be paid everything will be mentioned separately so that will be the net payment method then the next is we have to follow the journal entries in the books of the selling company so what are the journal entries we need in the books of the selling company so first thing is the whenever there is a merger of two companies both the companies will be liquidated and a new company is formed so whenever there is a liquidation of the company then there, there will be a closure of all the books of accounts of that company so all the assets will be transferred to an account called as the realization account so the first entry will be realization account debtor to various assets so what are the various assets so various assets may be land and building plant and machinery furniture and fittings etc so whatever the assets are taken over so that we will mention here being the transfer of various assets to realization account then there is an important note here so if the purchasing company does not take over cash and bank balances these should not be transferred to realization account see if the purchasing company does not take over cash then don't transfer the cash to realization account but other assets even if they are not taken over by the purchasing company they should be transferred to realization account so this is one thing you have to note here so all the assets should be transferred to realization account but cash should be transferred only if it is taken over by the purchasing company then the next entry for liabilities taken over so all the liabilities taken over will be provision against assets account debtor debentures account debtor to realization account so on the credit side of the realization account we transfer all the liabilities being various liabilities taken over provision against assets and debentures taken over transferred to realization account then the next one will be for the purchase consideration due so the purchasing company account debtor to realization account so this will be the entry for the purchase consideration due next for purchase consideration received by the selling company so what will be the entry cash account debtor equity shares account debtor preference shares account debtor to purchasing company account so we are debiting whatever we are receiving from the purchasing company and giving the credit to purchasing company account so being purchase consideration received then the next one is cash or bank account debtor to realization account so being assets not taken over by the purchasing company sold or realized now if there are any assets which are not taken over by the purchasing company then if you have sold the asset then we have to write this entry what is the entry cash or bank account debtor to realization account then next one is if the realization expenses are paid by the selling company so if the selling company is taking up the realization expenses so that has to be debited to realization account so realization account debtor to cash or bank account then the next one will be what about the liabilities the liabilities are uh, transferred only if they are taken over by the purchasing company so if the liabilities are not taken over then what should we do being concerned liabilities not taken over to realization account being profit on payment of liabilities not taken over by the purchasing company so if the liabilities are not taken over by the purchasing company then we write this entry only the profit part we have to make an entry in the realization account the or realization account debtor to concerned liabilities account not taken over being loss on payment suppose you have to make more payment to the liabilities then if it is a loss it will be transferred to the debit side of the realization account if it is a gain it will be transferred to the credit side of the realization account then the next it, it is debenture holders account if, if it is not taken over then debenture holders account debtor to realization 
being profit on payment of debenture holders. So, when you are paying the debenture holders, if there is a profit, the profit will be credited to realization account. And if um, there is a loss on payment of preference shareholders, the loss will be debited to preference shareholders account. Then, next one will be if there is a profit on realization. So, once you do the realization account, if there is a profit, then that profit will go to the uh, shareholders account. That is equity shareholders account data to realization. So, if there is a loss, it will be uh, transferred to equity shareholders account. Then, the next one is uh, suppose there is a credit balance of shareholders. So, what? how do you close the shareholders account? So, credit balance of shareholders account debtor to equity shareholders account being various credit balances of equity shareholders transferred to equity shareholders account. Then, if there is a debit balance also, equity shareholders account debtor to debit balance of shareholders account. Then equity shareholders account debtor to equity shares in purchasing company to preference shares in purchasing company to bank being equity shareholders paid. So whatever the money or the shares received by the equity shareholders that should be debited to the equity shareholders account. Then. The next one will be the preference shareholders. So, for the preference shareholders, the first the capital account debtor should be transferred to preference shareholders account. Then, whatever being the payment made to preference shareholders, so you debit the preference shareholders account debtor to preference shares in purchasing company to equity shares in purchasing company to bank. So, whatever payment they have received, you debit the preference shareholders account. Then, the next will be the various liabilities not taken over. So, various liabilities not taken over to bank. So, you have to make payment for the various liabilities which are not taken over by the purchasing company. Then, the next will be about the debentures. So, first thing is you transfer the debentures to the debenture holders account. So, debentures account debtor to debenture holders account being debentures transferred to debenture holders account. Next, for payment to the debenture holders, debenture holders account debtor to bank account. So, with this, we come to the end of this session. Hope you have all followed it. Thank you.